Hello and welcome to another lesson, another screencast, uh, this time on health and fitness. So just a reminder, obviously, uh, yellow text boxes refer to the task for students. The green text boxes are for students to take some notes uh, on. The blue tasks are sort of differentiated tasks, uh, primarily for the benefit of the students um, with maybe sentence starters and things like that. And obviously the red text boxes are for the teacher itself in regards to maybe some teaching and learning uh, strategies. So what does AQA basically ask us uh, for this specific topic? We, we need to be able to define and understand the key definitions of health and fitness. And ultimately, once you've got those two definitions, you need to be able to understand the relationship between both of those concepts. So between health and fitness. And ultimately, you need to be able to determine that the fact that a decreased fitness level can for example, lead to ill health, um, and at the same time, an increased fitness, um, despite ill health, uh, still exists as well, as we'll kind of see uh, throughout the course of this lesson. So, key definitions first and foremost, you need to be able to uh, be aware of what that definition of health basically refers to. So, it says a complete state of physical, mental, and social well being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So, in essence, there we're referring to the, the athlete themselves being uh, mentally, physically, so to do with the mind, to do with the body, and socially in regards to interaction with other people and how they feel about themselves. Um, uh, that needs to be a, a state of complete wellness and ultimately there can't just be an absence of disease and illness and, and injury. Uh, ill health there refers to the state of well being in a state of uh, poor physical, uh, mental and having uh, poor social well-being as well. So if we're ill it will be referred to as one of those aspects. So, quick starter task uh, for you, quick challenge for you. Pause the video now. Just want you to answer that question first and foremost. Can you be fit and unhealthy? So, just have a think about that and just make uh, two or three sentences answering your question. Okay, so hopefully you've answered that question now. Can you be fit and unhealthy? Well, the answer is yes. If we look um, in the next slide at sort of what the definition of fitness is, in a second I'll put it up it's basically the ability to cope with the demands of the environment but ultimately we can do that and still be unhealthy um, so think about definition of health you know having a complete state of physical mental and social well-being well the example here I've got on the right hand side is Sir Stephen Redgrave one of the most um, celebrated Olympic um, athletes of his time um, and, and as a gold medal rowist um, he he was fit he was able to um, cope with the demands of his environment hence why he won so many gold medals but ultimately he was you know by definition unhealthy he, he had he, he suffers with diabetes for example so technically he would be referred to as being unhealthy um, so yeah I mean that's just a common kind of mistake at times that, that people think uh, you can't be unhealthy if you're fit um, but but actually you can the key definition of fitness, as I said there, the ability to cope um, with the demands of the environment. So you need to make sure you make a note of that. And ultimately, again, pause the, pause the screen here and just see if you can answer this next challenge task. So as a coach, what do we need to consider to ensure our players are fit and healthy to perform on the pitch? OK, so hopefully you've answered that question. Um, you could have come up with different aspects here. So thinking about their fitness level, for example, um, how how you know how uh, they're able to improve their components of fitness. For example, if we're looking at it from a physiological point of view, um, are they able to cope with the demands of the environment um, through fitness tests, through the different types of training? But also we need to consider other things, so such as diet, um, nutrition. We need to think of hydration in order for our players to be fit and healthy. We also need to look at the other aspects. Um, the, the social side of things, the mental side of things. So are our players fit and healthy um, through, you know, just their own self-esteem, for example? Are they uh, depressed or are they um, comfortable in their, in, their, in their environment with their other um, players, other coaches and so on? Are they showing any anxiety, for example? And that all leads into the kind of psychological aspects that you'll be looking at later um, in your GCSE course. 
Um, I've put the I put the guy there, um, the, the the footballer. If you don't know who that is, that's Aaron Lennon. And the reason why I put him on there because you, technically he was fit, um, able to meet the demands of the environment. You know, a Premier League footballer played initially for Spurs, then then for Burnley and, and Everton as well. Um, but ultimately he suffered with depression, um, and and some of these you know unhealthy traits, so to speak, in terms of mental well-being are sometimes invisible aren't they um so that's why it's so difficult i think as a coach um to to recognize that so more is being done now at the moment in terms of the different um coaching courses out there in, in different sports but we've got to be able to recognize and, and understand our players uh, to ensure that they're both mentally socially and physically ready for um sport okay so the relationship of health and fitness so Ultimately, developing a good fitness level allows you to cope better with the demands of your daily life and the environment. OK, so uh, that's important to know, isn't it? So the, the fitter we are, the, the more likely we're going to be able to, to cope with those demands of our environment around us. Um, and it can obviously lessen the potential risk of illness and some diseases, can't it? So the fitter we are, um, we reduce our chances of, um, you know, a heart attack or stroke, for example, okay, because we have those benefits of exercise. Um, though, we've got to put this with caution, it's a common mistake to suggest that just an increased fitness definitely improves health. That's not always the case. So we just have to be aware of that. Again, it might be worth just sort of pausing your task here um first and foremost and just making a note of what are some of the mental benefits of keeping fit and exercising okay so hopefully you've come up with some ideas um you could have mentioned obviously uh you know serotonin being released within the brain which obviously improves our mood um the endorphins that run around uh you know run around within our brain and in our body uh puts us in a better mood it reduces stress uh, we lower the risk of depression and anxiety and we obviously can lift our mood and our spirits can't we um, so all of those things are, are, are kind of mental benefits of exercising um, ultimately though it, as it says there ill health can negatively affect fitness as the individual may be too unwell to train um, and thus and thus this can lower our fitness levels uh, and obviously ill health may not affect fitness if the person is still able to train and able to cope. Um, and obviously, you know, the diabetes, as we talked about with Sir Stephen Redgrave, that didn't impact on his ability to train. Um, but sometimes if we're too unwell, sometimes if we're suffering with a cold, with a flu, if, we've, if we're just not feeling quite right, then obviously we're, we can be too unwell to, to train and that can obviously lower our fitness levels ultimately. It says that increasing fitness can positively affect health and well-being. Uh, you are less likely to contract certain illnesses and diseases, as I've just spoken about um, prior to that. So, yes, if we do exercise regularly, yes, if we do improve our fitness, there is some um, evidence and there is evidence out there that obviously that can benefit us physiologically, can't it, in regards to reducing stroke uh, chances, reducing chronic heart disease, um, and reducing other illnesses as well. And obviously the increased fitness can enhance your self-esteem. It can enhance our social well-being too, isn't it? You think to yourself once you've exercised, how do you feel after it? Normally you feel tired, but normally you feel better that you've done some form of exercise rather than just sitting on the sofa um, and not doing anything for, for a long extended period of time. Um, and ultimately, we need to be recognise this last point. I think it's really important. It says that overtraining can lower your immune system and make you more susceptible to illness and disease. So rest and recovery is really important for a number of reasons, isn't it? Um, in regards to kind of, you know, repairing muscle uh, fibres uh, when we exercise. Um, but also, if we overtrain, OK, we are going to fatigue, OK, and we're also going to lower our immune system, which does make us more susceptible to picking up various illnesses. And, and you can notice that even just in work, let alone just the, let alone in regards to um, exercise, that when we work too much and we become a bit drained and we become a bit um, susceptible to picking up an illness. OK, so a final sort of challenge question for you, you might want to pause the video now, is uh, thinking about does an increase in a person's fitness definitely mean that they'll all be uh, healthier? So I want you to try and answer that at least 
um, six to ten lines you might want to use some of these sentence starters that are here that can help you if not obviously go back and look at um, some of the slides that we've just covered to help answer your question okay and finally for the teachers uh, this part in terms of teaching and learning strategies a few things that you can do here that, that I would normally do to cover this particular topic I think hinge questions are quite important so like the hinge question that I asked at the start, can you be fit and, and unhealthy? Uh, something like that in class um, or a similar question that gets students thinking, gets students talking um, and they're able to pose some questions to you perhaps. Um, that can obviously help in regards to this topic. I think odd one out is a useful um, teaching and learning strategy here where you might have four different pictures of athletes on the board. Um, you may find an athlete, for example, who's suffered with depression or you know unfortunately is committed suicide based on the fact that they were mentally unwell um but yet still still performing and i can think i can't remember the um german goalkeeper there's a german goalkeeper i think it was robert inca if i'm not mistaken something like that who um was was playing and was reserve goalkeeper i think for the german national team but ultimately committed suicide because um, he was he was suffering with depression. So I think something like that is useful for the, for the students to try and work out any connections or, or recognize why one individual is an odd one out. And it gets them even thinking about different other topics as well, doesn't it, in terms of components of fitness, uh, types of training and whatnot. So always a useful activity, odd one out. And the last one is sort of true and false. So again, you reading out statements or putting statements on the board and getting students to maybe hold up mini whiteboards or uh, different colors for green being true and red being uh, false if you've got access to things like that um, and that just ho hopefully checks for some of that understanding as well okay so best of luck with this topic feel free to uh, look back at some of the at some of the content and uh, worksheets are attached for your leisure too